here we're asked to solve for the variable in each of the following equations and check our answers. These equations involve several steps and often will require the use of the distributive property. Let's see the steps that we should take to work with equations like this. First, we're going to simplify each side of the equation and remove parentheses if necessary, combine like terms. Then apply the addition subtraction property to move all the terms with the variable on one side and the non-variable terms on the other. Then simplify again if needed. Then apply multiplication and division property to isolate the variable and then check by substituting our answer into the original equation. So let's see how that works with part A. We have x minus 5 equals 4x plus 7. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is to get these terms that have x's onto the same side of the equation. And I can do that either by subtracting x from both sides to move the x over here, or subtract 4x from both sides and move the 4x over here. So I am going to opt to subtract 4x from both sides just so we can see how that looks. So 4x minus 4x plus 7. So that part goes to 0. That's why we chose to subtract 4x from both sides. This is really 1x minus 4x is minus 3x minus 5 equals 7. Now I need to continue this process and move all of the terms that don't have variables to the other side of the equation. To do that, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I have minus 5 plus 5 equals 7 plus 5. Minus 5 plus 5, that goes to 0. So I'm left with negative 3x equals 12. Now I'm at this step here to apply the multiplication division property. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. That leaves me with x equals negative 4. And let's do a check. So to check, what I'm going to do is plug negative 4 into the left side, negative 4 into the right side, but I'm going to do that on my calculator and just verify that those two computations give me the same value. So first, it's negative 4 minus 5 gives me negative 9. That's the left-hand side. So the right-hand side, I have 4 times negative 4 plus 7. That result also equals negative 9. Therefore, x equals negative 4 is checked. For part b, I have negative parentheses x minus 2 equals 15. I'm going to need to jump right to the distributive property step and go ahead and remove the parentheses. So to remove the parentheses, I need to multiply everything inside the parentheses by the negative. And really it's negative 1, but we can look at it as just resolving signs. So negative times a positive x is negative x. Negative times a negative 2 is positive 2. Now I have negative x plus 2 equals 15. I want to get the term that has the x in it by itself. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Two minus two goes to zero. That's why we chose to subtract two from both sides. I'm left with minus x equals 13. Well, if negative x equals 13, then x is negative 13. I can also take the step to multiply both sides by negative one. Let's double check our result in our calculator, negative parentheses, now I need another set of parentheses for the negative 13. Subtract 2. So there's a lot of parentheses going on here. So be sure that you see where all these go. So this part is what I'm inserting. That the, takes the place of x. It's negative, so I went ahead and used parentheses because it was inside parentheses. Subtract 2. 
these are the outer parentheses, and then this is the negative that was part of the original equation. I'm going to press enter. That gives me 15, which verifies because I have 15 on the right. So this solution is checked. For part C, I have an equation that involves decimals. I'm going to treat this just like I do an equation that doesn't have decimals in that I'm going to clear the parentheses, combine like terms, move the variable terms to one side, the constant terms to the other, and then use multiplication division property to isolate the variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first step. I'd like you to pause the video. I'd like you to try to take the first step here, then come back to the video and check and make sure that you're on the right track. So the first step just involved clearing the parentheses on both sides by using the distributive property. 3.1 times 4 gave me 12.4n. 3.1 times 2.2, 6.82, I left the negative in between, I cleared the right hand side. So this is my result from my first step. Now what I want to do is I want to combine the variables on one side and move the constants to the other. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to skip some steps here. I would be subtracting 5.2n from both sides. So what that means is I'm going to end up with a minus 5.2n on the left hand side. I would then be adding 6.82 to both sides. So that means I'm going to end up with 17.68 plus 6.82 on the right hand side. Be sure you understand where I got those quantities because I did skip a couple steps. But all I'm doing is applying the addition and subtraction property of equality to move these terms to one side of the equation or the other. Now what I'd like you to do is to pause the video, combine like terms on both sides to complete the next step, then come back to the video and make sure you're on the right track. 12.4n minus 5.2n gives 7.2n. If I combine the terms on the right, I end up with 24.5. Now I can use the division property of equality, divide both sides by 7.2. Notice I'm only dividing by the coefficient, not by the variable. Leave the variable there because we want the variable by itself. 24.5 divided by 7.2. Let's do that on the calculator. 24.5 divided by 7.2. Enter. And I'm going to go ahead and round that to a couple of decimals. So let me make this symbol one of the approximate symbols, 3.40. Now to check, let me clear this out. I'm going to plug 3.4 into the left-hand side. So that becomes 4 times 3.4, really 3.40, minus 2.2 and press enter. Then I'm going to put that same number in on the right hand side. Oops. 3.40 plus 3.4 and we'll see how close we are. So we are really really close. This little discrepancy between the values in the hundredths place is because of the rounding that we did to get this result here. So this is close enough, since we're using decimals, we can consider this result to be checked. Moving on to part D, I have 4 minus the quantity, 2y minus 1 equals 2 times the quantity, 5y plus 9 plus y. So I've got a lot of work to do here, removing parentheses. I'm going to ask that you pause the video, that you go ahead and try to take that step on your own, then restart the video and check with what happens here with the first step and make sure that you're on the right track. So after I clear the parentheses, I end up with 4 minus 2y plus 1, this was a minus times a minus, equals 10y plus 18, 
plus just y by itself. This 2 does not carry to the y. It stops at the 9. Now let's combine like terms on the left. That gives me 5 minus 2y. Combine like terms on the right. 10y plus y is 11y plus 18. Now I'd like you to pause the video, take the next step to move the variables to the left, the constants to the right, and be sure you're on the right track. So if we move 11y to the left, it becomes negative 11y. If we move 5 to the right, it becomes minus 5. Combining like terms on the left, I have minus 2y minus 11y. That gives me minus 13y. 18 minus 5 gives me 13. Now I'm going to use the division property of equality and divide both sides by negative 13. Notice I'm just dividing by negative 13. Leave the y, otherwise the y is gone and we lose the point of that step. 13 divided by 13 is negative 1. That should be our final answer. Let's double check by inserting negative 1 in place of y on the left and negative 1 in place of y on the right. So I have 4. Uh, let's clear all this out so you can see it really well. 4 minus parentheses 2 times, I'm going to put the negative 1 in parentheses and then subtract 1, and the parentheses, and that is this left-hand side with negative 1 in place of y. We're going to hit enter. That should be 7. I'm going to do the same thing on the right-hand side. So 2 times parentheses 5, parentheses negative 1, plus 9. So that's just this first part right here with negative 1 inserted for y. I still need to add negative 1 and that parentheses. Press enter. We get 7, which confirms that y equals negative 1 is our final solution.